Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to learn how to add a caching layer for .NET applications using Amazon Elastic Cache for MemcacheD. My name is Srivan Tattanayake and I'm a senior partner solution architect at Amazon Web Services focusing around Microsoft technologies. We will first learn why we need caching by going through some use cases and then learn about Amazon Elastic Cache. We will then focus on how to create an Amazon Elastic Cache cluster for MemcacheD and then learn how to use it in our .NET applications. Let's now try to learn why we need caching using an example. Imagine you are doing an expensive read operation from a data store that takes a lot of time. If you can store the result in a cache, when you query for the same data set later, you can access it quickly, reducing the latency, increasing the speed, and more importantly, reducing the load in the data store. In this example, when the application sees a cache miss, it reads from the data store, store the result in a cache, and when you access the data next time, you can access the data directly from the cache. What I discussed before is only one such use case. There are many such use cases. For example, in gaming industry, we use caching for player leaderboards, and in machine learning, we use caching to store pre-calculated models. At Amazon, we don't believe in one-size-fits-all databases. Developers are building highly distributed applications using a multitude of purposely built databases. Developers are doing what they do best, breaking complex applications into small pieces and then picking the best tool to solve each problem. If you are looking for a fast, low latency, in-memory cache solution for your .NET application, Amazon Elastic Cache is a great place to start with. Amazon Elastic Cache is a fully managed, highly available, secure and reliable, low latency, in-memory cache solution based out of time-proven open source technologies. It comes in two flavors, MemcacheD and Redis. And in this session, we will focus on Amazon Elastic Cache for MemcacheD. Let's now go for a demo and then try to learn how to use Amazon Elastic Cache for MemcacheD in our .NET applications. Let's go to Elastic Cache cluster section of AWS console and then create a subnet group. We will deploy our Elastic Cache cluster to the subnets we are going to select in these subnet groups. So select the availability zones and the corresponding subnet groups. We'll go to memcached and then select the type of the cluster you want to create. In this case, we are going to create a memcached cluster, give it a name, select the engine version that you want to deploy. So this is the memcached engine version, port numbers. For the instance type, I'm going to select a T3 medium because I don't have a lot of data. And for the number of nodes, I select two. For the subnet groups, select the subnet group you just created and then leave all the other entries the default values, including the uh, node 1 and node 2 availability zones. So let's go there and then create the Elastic Cache cluster. It will take some time for this to come alive, but before that, let's go to our .NET application and then try to uh, program for our Elastic Cache cluster. I have added a few Nougat packages. One is Amazon Elastic Cache Cluster. The other one is Anium Memcached. There are a lot of Nougat packages that you can use to connect into any Memcached cluster. Since Amazon Elastic Cache is always compatible with open source Memcached version, you can use any of these libraries available to access it. Anium Memcached is a very famous library, therefore I have used it in my sample demo application. In my program, I have a very simple class called Memcached sample. And here I have a few configuration. First one is to get this Elastic Cache cluster config. You can get it from your app config or web config. If you don't specify any parameters when you construct it, it will read the configurations from the app config or web config. 
Here you can see I have a section called cluster client. And in the cluster client, I have given the host name to point into my Elasticlash cluster config endpoint. This config endpoint, you can find it in your Amazon AWS console. So if you go into memcached cache, you can find under description the configuration endpoints. You should never use the node endpoints directly because this config endpoint is smart enough to figure it out if a node goes down that it can automatically add it. So never use the node endpoints directly. Always use the configuration endpoint when you access this cluster. Alternatively, instead of reading from the web config go app config, you can directly pass the uh, URL of your cluster and also the port that you want to connect. For the moment, I'm going to use the app config uh, data. Let's create some simple data set in inside this memcached. So let's put a breakpoint and then run this application. So I'm creating the memcached client and then I'm going to store some value. I'm going to set the value. So that will, uh, if you have a value, it will set it. Uh, if you don't have one, it will add that value. Key is my key one and the value is my key value one. So I save it. Let's now read the value. You can see that I'm reading my key one and the value I got as expected. Let's now remove the data. I initiate the client, remove the key, and I then check whether the result is there. As you can see, the result is null. Instead of setting the value, I can add the value. When you add the value, what will happen is if you don't have a value, it will add it. If you already have one, it will throw an exception. You can also replace a value. Replacing will throw an exception if you don't already have a value for the given key. For the moment, I will use the value set. You provide the timestamp so that it will automatically get evicted from the cache. You can also save complex data type like this employee with a list of departments. The important thing here is that, that all these classes has to be binary serializable. So I have given an attribute called serializable so that uh, these are all binary serializable classes. Behind the scene, the library that I'm using is smart enough to serialize these objects into strings. So let's now create a complex data type. I'm going to get a sample employee, and then I'm going to set uh, the sample employee with the key employee ID. You have age 24 and a bunch of departments. Uh, so let's uh, now save this. And after that, let's try to read this value. Reading complex data is also very simple. The only difference here is that you need to cast the value that you get from the client. And once you cast it, you will have uh, the previous value that you stored, in this case, age 24, two departments. I can also do some atomic increments. So here I have a method called increment that will increment a value that I keep in my data store. Important thing to remember is that this value has to be a string. Although it's a number, you cannot store an integer number here and then increment it. So I store this number called 100. And then uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, increase this number by number 12. So I create a client again. Uh, here I have a method called increment and it's going to increase my number. If there's no number called my number, it will to take number 200. But in my case, I have a 100 as my number. What will happen is uh, it will add this number 12 into a number 100 and it's going to be an atomic increment. So if you read this value again, you will have 112. You now know how to use memcached in your .NET applications.